the third pick, right? Second round. All right, the third pick that I'm looking at. I don't know if this guy's gonna be there. And and to be honest with you, I'm looking for the need, what we need, okay, with the Chiefs. And so we're looking for another another guy opposite of MBS. Okay, that's that's what we need. I'm I'm thinking offensively, this is where we're looking for that wide receiver if the guy is available. Okay. And so I'm I'm gonna preface this. Uh, this I'm, I'm gonna say there's three guys. There's three, and I don't know if they'll fall, but I like Johnny Dotson. I like uh, 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 George Pickens, and I like uh, Christian Watson. Okay, there's three guys. All right, now I'm gonna give you all three three guys. Okay, for the for for the fact. And here's the thing, because I, I don't know if these guys look. We know guys. People need wide receivers. We know they need wide receivers all over the league. Right. I mean, I'm sitting there, I'm looking at the teams that's picking it before it's on 50. I'm like, oh, gosh, like, I don't know if these guys will be there because <laughs> it's like it's going to start going like hotcakes. Right. But those three guys, John and Dodson, look what he's been able to do. The rap running ability, getting open in his hands. To me, like when I'm sitting over here, a guy like that just makes sense. I mean, he, he really does. Offensively, like making a transition into the NFL. And we're talking about a guy who 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 runs great crisp routes. Okay, uh, didn't have the, the greatest of quarterbacks. Okay, it, it played in college, throwing it to him all all the time. And so the things he was able to do just looks so seamless to me. Like it just looks so natural and, and easy. And so when I'm I'm, I'm when I'm looking at, at wide receivers, when a guy's just taking off running, he's running routes and coming out of his break, and he's just catching the ball. I, it just it seems so natural to him. Like it's this is something he was he was built to do, right? And so he kind of has like a little bit of that twitch motion. I, this evaluation, maybe it's too far. Now I, I learned this a long time ago, not to use guys' names and other guys because sometimes like look, don't disrespect this guy by saying this guy's name. You know he ain't got there yet. He ain't earned that. But the way he he runs, uh, I don't know. Like to me, he he kind of looks. And I'm, I'm just a guy back in the day, and it, not really comparison, but I just kind of how he runs routes, just kind of twitchy. It's like Marvin Harrison in a way. I don't know, it, but he kind of seems a little bit that way. I see like little flashes of that in him. Plus the way he's able to pluck the ball out of the air. That's why. That's why I love more than, than anything else. And I think uh, what we've been missing is kind of like sure handedness. On, on the Chiefs is like the guy just plucking the ball. Like when you throw the ball to him, you know, he's going up to pluck it. And so they, they was throwing, uh, there was, they were showing a couple of videos of uh, Tyreek, like, especially like in the playoffs. So he went up for one and he tried to catch it like this and, it, it, and they intercepted it. That's a, he's without a doubt. You throw it up to him, he's going to go get it. It's just like Pat would throw it up there to him, knowing he's going to make that catch. Right. In that matchup. And so he's not scared to go up and get it. You can see his high point skills. I mean, he's catching it, he's on it. I mean, his ball skills is set is 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 incredible. That's what I love about him. Okay. So Dotson, I like him. Now I'm gonna go to Pickens. Now I've been I mean kind of talking to people, of course, on, on Twitter about this guy. I don't like Watson and Pickens. I like Pickens. I like Pickens a lot. Now, obviously, the, the injury, okay, the ACL coming back. Is an issue. It's cause for concern. Uh, the guy's got ball skills. He's got body control. He's got great hands. He, he's, you know, he can. He can. He's a guy that can do it all. He really can. He, he's a guy that you, you know is going to run good routes. He's going to body guys up. Uh, he runs by guys, and so he understands you know route running too. He does, he does a great job setting guys up, man. He, he, he does. It, I mean, he looks phenomenal out there, right? I mean, anybody would love to have a guy like that. Uh, and so I think he'll fall just because of the injury in itself. We were talking about injuries. The team's like, hey, you know, I, this guy, I like him, but do I like him that much for this? So I think he might be a guy that could fall to us uh, for the 50th pick. No doubt about it, right? So I like Pickens. I like him a lot, man. Just his athletic ability. Plus, when you look at how he's – his exuberance on playing, like making plays, I love that. I love that swag about it. You know what I'm saying? Because he's, he's – he wants to compete. He's like, look, I know I'm out here, and I know I'm going to take this guy first down on you. Let's go. And he's just going to keep coming at you. And I love that. I, I just love that 
guys that have that confidence that's oozing out of him, and he has it all about him. So that's what I love about Pickens. Now, my third guy, right, is still the, the Watson, okay? This is Watson. Because he played in North Dakota State, everybody's like, is he going to be able to translate up here to the NFL, right? Listen, this is what I know. Same thing going to scout and playing the ball. I played with his dad, for one. I played with him uh, up in Philly, okay? So I know he comes from from great stock. I know he comes from a good dude, for one, all right? And I know his his father got him right. And I know he's got the NFL mindset. I've seen this guy just get better and better every single year when I start looking at the tape and I start looking at the numbers. And everybody was talking about, oh, man, he's a drop machine, this and that. Well, they don't tell you after the third game this past season, he didn't drop not one ball. You know, everybody keeps missing the fact when he went down to, to senior bowl, he's torching every DB that was out there, right, on this high-level competition, and he's taking everybody's name. Not to mention, if freak act, you know, his athleticism, man runs a 4-3, okay? He can go hit his head on the goalpost every time you get the ball to him, right? And so when I'm sitting over here, and I was, I was, I was kind of talking about this, like, we lost Tyreek Hill. You're talking about it. You need a headbanger that, that, can, that is a triple threat, triple threat. Return, okay? He can return the ball. You can hand it off on just sweeps. You can give the ball to him, okay? He can hit, take the top off the defense. And I'm talking about running by guys. The ones I was seeing Kip Pickens uh, die for, he's running He's running past it. He's catching up underneath it. I mean, that's because he has that speed. And so when I'm looking at it, what I know about guys from smaller schools is there's a, there's a sense of heart in them, okay? that he wants to prove himself every time. And he's looking to get better. And we talked about a guy who's just a hard worker. And you see it in, in, in his production over the years that once he gets like NFL coaching from guys to know exactly what he is, he's going to do, the guy's going to produce. I, I, uh, to me, I think he's got star written all over him, right? Look, he may, he may take a little time to get there, but I, I think once he gets there and he figures it out, gets some real toolage and some coaching, this guy right here, is, he's going to be taking off. And the thing is, I learned this from John Gruden. John Gruden always said, man, don't be a robot. Don't be a robot, Jason. When you run routes, and don't... I got what he said. He said, man, use your athletic ability with the system that we're running with your skills. Once we get to, you know, you know the route to run, I need to see Jason Dunn run that route. I need to see that four or five come out of you. I need to see that, that basketball on your hips come out when you're running that route now. So Christian Watson get there, Brad, and we're talking about the system that we run. I think Jahani Dodson and Christian Watson with the system that we run will be an ideal guy to be here. For the simple fact, you hand the ball out to him, you throw him in short intermediate routes, you know, run some bubbles and stuff like that with him, let him go hit his head on the goalpost. So that's where I'm at with it. So I'm going to let you talk, man. I know I'm talking a lot, man, but I, I just get excited now instead of talking. But go ahead. Go ahead. No, I think I, I love it. I think a wide receiver is definitely where I think he'll go at 50. Uh I think a couple more people that you could definitely go. I mean, you. I think John Metchie will fall to you from Alabama, and I think I wouldn't be surprised if Alec Pierce, uh, George Pickens' mm. teammate, the, the yeah. little white boy, I think he could be another yeah, sneaky, yeah. sneaky guy that yeah. could come in and do something. I do think Pickens will be there at fifty. I think he could do. That. I think Dotson will be there at fifty, and mm. Watson. I'm not 100 percent sure about. I think Watson will probably be gone by fifth by fifty, but. You never know. I could be wrong. I can tell you this. I watched. I had the pleasure to watch Watson um, his entire career. I scout small schoolers, and um, Watson is everything that you said. Um, he's probably one of the best return men in the in the draft. Um, it's not even close. I mean, he hits yeah. speeds that are ridiculous on his returns, and he's one play away from breaking it. And that's what Tyree Kill was. So you you kind of hit them on the head. I think with the fiftieth pick, if you do go wide receiver, I don't think you can go wrong with any one of those five that we just mentioned. But you definitely want to give Pat more weapons. Uh, losing Tyree kills a lot of targets. You guys lost D. Rob, and you lost one more wideout, right? Who was it? Yeah, Pringle. Pringle. Yeah, Pringle. Yeah, Pringle. So Pringle went to Chicago. Up, if, yeah, if you add up all those missed targets. Now that they're missing, they're going to need to find somebody else to split it up. Tyree Kill had 150 plus targets last year alone. That's a lot. That's a lot of targets. So that's 10 targets a game, give or take, you know, when you start breaking it down. I mean, that's a lot of targets. So who are you going to disperse them to? Is it going to be Juju? Is it going to be, you know, the guys that they have? MV, you know, Mark was uh, yes. Valdez, uh, Scantling, whatever. Um, 
I don't know, but I mean, I'll tell you this: you gotta, you gotta find weapons and you gotta replace them. And I think last year in the draft, the Chiefs were well, not even the draft, just just in free agency and off season, their main goal was to protect Patrick Mahomes, and they did that. Um, yeah. They did a great job at it. And this year, I think they're going to do what you said is get the defense right. I think they're going to try to do everything they can to get the defense right and add weapons and especially cheaper weapons, guys that they can groom into the the Andy Reid system over years that they don't have to pay 25 million to. So any three of those, any five of those guys would be great. Yeah, the Dotson um, uh, draft pick. My my brother and I were talking about that, JD. We actually said that uh, he reminded us of a Marvin Harrison, Tyler Lockett, like kind of hybrid. That's what he kind of reminded uh, my brother and I of. So yeah. it's funny, it's funny yeah. you said that. Yeah, and, and, and so and, and kind of same thing to the point. We were just kind of talking about real quick, uh, offensively, right? We know contracts. Juju's on a one year deal. Okay. Yep. Hartman is 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 his last year on his deal. Right. So now all of a sudden it's going to be MBS and then who else? And so, like you said, taking targets away, a guy like that, that you are are, are helping uh, to groom. OK, if you will, in the NFL. OK, you give him little stuff where he's, he's kind of catching up because you got you got veterans in the room right now. Right. You got MBS, you got Juju and you got uh, Hardman. And then you call so you got Josh Gordon, Corey Coleman. Uh, you got guys in here who's played in the NFL. Right. Who will help him in his pro- progression. And so a guy like that, because he's getting better, who wants to learn, who's easy a sponge, I, I think, like, man, to me, uh, because of his skill set, like you said, he, the return man, all those different things, man, come on, man. You got that guy in the room already, right? You got him in the room. I say he's as close to Tyreek Hill than anybody else. He's a guy that Patrick could do like, hey, I'm just going to throw it, F it. Uh, Watson's down there somewhere, right? He, he could be that guy, you know? So – that's so what I got. So my next pick, okay, round two, uh, at, at 62, and I think this guy, he, he's been coming up on the boards lately, uh, and I watched him here, okay? And uh, I like him a lot. There's two guys. I'm going to give you two. I'm going to give you two. See what you think, okay? Josh Pascal from Kentucky, okay? He's. I've watched him since he's been here, and I, I, I have a great friend who's who's. Uh, he, he's a strength coach over at UK. All right, and he always gives me all the. And I'm friends with the, the, the staff up here at UK. You know, I, I know these guys. He jumps out to me all the time. I mean, every time I'm watching him, they rave about this guy all the time. And when you watch against the defense and the, the, the competition he's going against, he's always showing up. He's always in on the play. And it's all like, I'm like, man, this dude, oh, man, I'm like, it's him again? Wow, it's him? And, and, and he's relentless. And so what we need, we've been missing, in my opinion, is relentless guys on the line, okay? Like that hunger, just keep getting after guys, okay? And so he gives you that run game that he can, he can, he can definitely uh, hunker down Okay, and give you that that guy on that line of defense that can stop the run, share the guy, and get the tackle. He he has that ability about him, and I think he's ready now because he's done that all in the SEC against all the competition, against all the best guys. Uh, you name the tackles or whoever who's coming out this year. John has knocked off each, each and every one of them. He, he's 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 done his best against him, and he's done a great job. So he's already ready, I think, for the NFL. So I like him a lot. The other guy I think might be there that I like too. Okay. Uh, I watched him in the senior bowl and I start watching a lot more of his tapes in some of the games uh, that I like. Logan Hall. So I don't know if Logan Hall is going to be there, but I like him a lot. And so he's another of those guys that high energy guy that keep coming. He's got the size, he's got the strength, enough strength where he could play, you know, in this defense to be effective. And so, but a guy like that, man, it could just move around. I like it. So what do you think? Uh, you know, it's funny. I, if I showed you my paper, I have Josh, Josh Pascal. I mean, I, that's who I have. I think, oh, he really? fits your de- I think he fits the defense exactly what you said. He fits a perfect, amazing storyline behind him. You got to really check out his storyline. Uh, beat cancer. I mean, I think he had cancer and beat it, overcame it. Um, mm-hmm. He was a guy I wanted for the Hula Bowl. I worked for the Hula Bowl. I was trying to get him down there. I 
tried everything I could. I was begging him basically. And he didn't, he, you know, obviously he went to a bigger game, but I tried, I damn it. I gave it my all, but, uh, yeah. you know, what? He, 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 absolutely. He'll be a guy that I think will be there at 62. That can make your defense a lot better. One guy that I have on that list that I think may be a little rich for the 62nd, 60 62nd spot, but I think can really like do some damage in the chiefs is Jalen Weidermeyer, the tight end. Um, he had a horrible pro day, and it's going to make him drop. But you can turn on the film, and that pro day does not resemble the player. The player is something totally different. I mean, he's just a big-time playmaker. Um, I, I don't know if they'll need a tight end. I, I really don't know where they'll fall. But if you look at their big 30 visits, they're bringing in tight ends. They brought in tight ends, several of them late-round guys. So if – Weidermeyer's there and he's a 62 and they feel comfortable with him. Mm -hmm. I mean, like I told you before, Andy Reid's a guy that doesn't care about any of that stuff. Like if you right. can play on Sunday and produce on Sunday, mm -hmm. you're going to be a chief or a Eagle or whatever team he was on. That's just the way he is. And, uh, you know, I, I love Josh Pascal though. I think I, I, if they're, if he's there and they take him a 62, that's a home run. I'm just telling you right now, he should be there. That's a home run. If, if they take him. What, what, what do you think about Logan Hall? Let me, let me hear your estimate on, on him. Uh, I, I love Logan Hall. I think he's going to go before 62. Uh, there's there's okay. rumors that he could go at the end of the first. I mean, his stock is skyrocketing right now, and, and it yeah. is because of his motor. His motor, he's relentless. You know, yeah. last year, Houston had Peyton Turner that went in the first round. Nobody was expecting that, and they were like, who in the heck? The Peyton Turner, and they're like, what? And they, You know what? But them Houston kids are different. You go back, Ed Oliver, yeah. like, just – yeah. Houston finds athletic specimens on that D line. They had a kid a couple of years ago named Isaiah Chambers, who's in this year's draft class. He's in McK uh -huh. McNeese State. The kid won like damn. He was damn near Buck Buchanan winner for for the FCS. So Houston wow. produces defensive ends. That's like D N U. So you know Logan Hall would not be a bad pick, and he's a bigger guy that's a freaky athlete. So yeah, uh, it would be a great it would be a great pick too, but. I definitely would take Pascal right there at that point. I don't care if Logan Hall's even there. I'm taking Pascal. I'm a Pascal, <laughs> I'm a Pascal homer, man. I love him. Yeah, you yeah. Can't, I like When him. you're going up against the SEC every week and doing what he I mean, he was abusing. Like, yes. I, I, talked to, I talked to offensive tackles. I was trying to find a great defensive ends for my game, and I contacted yeah. Florida. I contacted Tennessee. I contacted these major schools, and I said – who is the best edge rusher that you ever had to face? They said, damn, that guy from Kentucky, man. Ooh, every is that right? One, everyone. Wow. Dude, and I mean, when I talked to Florida's left tackle, Florida's left tackle was like, dude, yeah, Pascal gave me fits, man. That dude's yeah. he's, he's freaking tough to play against. I'm taking him. I mean, you sold me already. When you're playing left tackle in the SEC and you're telling me that every single one's telling me the same thing, yeah. Why do you think I wanted Josh Pascal so bad? I was, I was, man, look, I, dude, if, if I could have found his parents' number, I would have called. Like, I was that serious. I was trying to get him. <laughs> I hear you. I hear you. I know, man, look, I, I, like, I man, I watched, the, I'm just watching the games. And I, you know, it's true. I'm checking this dude out, man. He just kept showing up. And I'm, I'm, he's just taking people's lunches. And I'm just like, man, he's, he's wearing these guys out, right? And nobody's saying, you know, UK, you know, you got some guys, of course, but, you know, this dude, shoot. But also, too, Josh Allen's is where he comes from, UK. Every you know, down with the Jaguars, they they learned mm -hmm. some things at UK for sure, right? They got a great they got a great staff up there, no doubt about it. Shout out to them, you know, for putting some 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 real guys out there, you know. So, uh, but man, I, yeah, Pascal, if he's there, absolutely got to take him, man. I would love for him to be a chief, love for him to be one. David, you mentioned uh, a tight end. Um... Uh, the, the one name that I've seen a lot of Chief fans talk about, um, and I watch a lot of Pac, I, I, I like, I like Pac-12 football, Pac-12 and Big 12 football, the, the conference I like watching, um, I like offense. Uh, but um, Greg Dulcich, uh, do you think he'll be around in that pick? I think you can get him later on. I, I really do. I think maybe maybe a little bit later on, 94 is where I actually have his name written, but he wow. could be a guy that could be there at 94. I don't think that you're going to – I don't think you need him in 62. I, 
to be honest with you, I don't think a, a tight end's going in the first round. Um, the top tight end's going to probably be uh, McBride from Colorado State. I could see him going first. And I got him pegged about 10, about in the top five, top 10 of the second round. So then after that, you're really talking, you're already at almost 50 right there. So I wouldn't necessarily jump on Greg, but I mean, he, he could be there at the 90 to where it would be a much better value pick for them. But um, he's an athletic guy, too, with great hands. So UCLA just don't know how to use players correctly. I said that out loud, but go ahead.